Alrighty, I have a really interesting video for you guys today on a new series I will be doing. As you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be talking about some of the biggest mistakes Canada's Wonderland has ever made. I'll be doing this for various parks, but of course I'll be starting off with my home park first. In part one of Canada's Wonderland's biggest mistakes ever, I'll be discussing the sale of their north plot of land that was sold off to the city of Vaughan back in 2008 and 2009. Now, I know some of you might be like, what do you mean, Brendan? Wasn't that a smart business move to build a relationship with the town of Vaughan? Well, technically yes, to some degree. However, there are a multitude of reasons to why this was their biggest mistake ever. I spent a really long time mapping out existing attractions and similar existing attractions and how that plot of land could have been utilized better. So pull down those clamshell restraints as I show you guys what would have been one hell of an amazing plan for Canada's Wonderland if Dick Kinzel wasn't the acting CEO at the time of the sale. While you're watching, feel free to comment below what you wish one thing Canada's Wonderland did differently through the many years it's been operational and as usual, if there's a concept you'd love to see us cover, please comment below and uh, a member of our team will take down the concept for a future video. To give any new visitors here a quick beginner's note recap of what happened back in 2006, Cedar Fair, the current owner of Canada's Wonderland, made a bid to purchase Paramount Parks, the previous owner, and was successful in doing so. The CEO back then was Dick Kinzel, whom I personally believe in himself was one of Canada's Wonderland's biggest downfalls. Dick Kinzel did not believe in water park additions, and his prime focus was on a property located in Sandusky, Ohio, called Cedar Point. Now, we must give credit where credit is due, and Dick Kinzel did push for Canada's first hypercoaster, over 200 feet tall, Behemoth, which was the start of a long list of investments to come to Canada's Wonderland. Now, furthermore, a lot of Canadians don't actually know this, but Canada's Wonderland is the most attended seasonal theme park in North America. It averages around 3.5 million visitors annually, with numbers now growing past 4 million with the addition of their absolutely stunning Winterfest event. Canada's Wonderland is approaching a problematic situation of being completely landlocked with little to no room to grow infrastructure, attractions, and accommodations. One may ask, what sort of problems could being landlocked cause? Well, here are some of the problems Canada's Wonderland is currently facing. Canada's Wonderland is currently fitting a six to eight story hotel in its very back corner plot of land adjacent to Rutherford, which received some backlash from citizens whose houses are located next to the hotel, further pushing back the hotel's targeted opening. In fact, it caused nearly a year delay. In itself, with the engineering firm having to remove two stories from the design in order to prevent the top two floors being able to have a view of people's backyards in the townhouse community next to the hotel. Cedar Fair, the company that owns Canada's Wonderland, is currently in a phase of developing hotels and lodging at their larger portfolio parks, such as Wonderland, due to Cedar Point's hotel properties making up roughly 10% of the company's revenues. With this focus on hotel properties and lodging, Vaughn being such a large market and located so closely to Toronto and a major highway, Canada's Wonderland is a must for developing hotels and lodging. The problem of land availability and restrictions comes into play. As you will later see, I have constructed the perfect plan for what could have been 
Canada's Wonderland also has an entertainment facility that used to be used frequently. I, it used to be home to popular events such as Z103's Summer Rush and multicultural events, but is now used as Winterfest storage. Wait till you see my revitalization plan for the venue in an either or situation. This now brings our attention over to Wonderland's water park. Wonderland's water park used to be a must visit, but as of late has become a must avoid. Unlike its sister parks in the chain, Splashworks has received next to no investments and is in part because of being landlocked. Stuck between Behemoth, Mindbuster, and Whitewater Canyon, Splashworks has little ability to grow and distinguish itself as a destination water park for its competitors, such as the water parks in Quebec, Niagara Falls, and of course, Wet n Wild in Toronto. With these three main issues that I just listed, you are starting to see the common issue of being landlocked and not evaluating Canada's Wonderland's true potential back in 2006 to 2008. I will now present my concept of what the land that the hospital currently sits on could have been used for instead. Imagine if Kingswood Theatre, Splashworks, and hotels and shops and dining were all located adjacent to Canada's Wonderland. Imagine a park that had 100 acres of undeveloped land now for use. In my concept, I measured out Splashworks, half of Wonderland's parking, Kingswood Theater, the plot of the land that the future hotel is using, and the shopping centers located across the street to show you what that land could have been utilized for. In terms of the water park, you could have had a parking garage, separate entrance with separate admission, and build newer assets from ProSlide and theme the entire water park to anything and everything very Canadian. They could have expanded their revenue stream greatly with this alone. Having Splashworks located over on the north end of the property could have allowed for 30 plus acres of development to fit a campground or future additions such as Phase 2 of Frontier Canada without removing the forest that Whitewater Canyon sits in. This brings us to Kingswood Theatre and how it's been forgotten about with the land to the north. They could have moved Kingswood Theater there with a more modern design and even made it more larger. I'll explain why this would have been a very strategic move. If they moved Kingswood Theater over there and had one to two hotels located there along with restaurants and shopping, it would have been a very strategic and attractive business move for concerts and events to be held there. You'd have the conference rooms in the hotel, the hotel rooms for bookings, and the restaurants and bars for the concerts as well. This could attract events that want to have their late night viewings, and concert goers would be inclined to book rooms at the hotels located within a walking distance, and they'd also be inclined to go for pre-drinks at the bars and restaurants, or visit, perhaps, Wonderland and the water park during the day before or after the event, transforming Wonderland into a multi-day visit. Third part of this could have been expansion would have been the bars, retail, and restaurant district. This area would have been open year-round, providing a source of revenue to Cedar Fair year-round and similar, very similar, to CityWalk, not have an admission to enter have specialty restaurants that aren't offered in the area around or near Canada's Wonderland that would draw a diverse crowd. Again, as stated earlier, this would be a great combo for people to book rooms at the hotels. On top of these concepts that I've imagined, Canada's Wonderland used to have a second parking toll entrance to the park, located on this plot of land. This would greatly be helpful nowadays as on a very busy day, the park can take upwards of an hour plus to enter the parking lot alone due to poor traffic flow on Jane Street mixed with two large entrances 
meeting at a singular entrance point. Having the north entrance gate still available would alleviate the north crowds and allow for the north and south lots to fill up in a more streamlined way. Now all these concepts and plans have been great, but it's unfortunately too late and we haven't invented time travel quite yet. Or at least to my knowledge, we haven't. Hopefully you enjoyed this first part of a series of Canada's Wonderland's biggest mistakes. In my opinion, this was truly one of their biggest mistakes to date, and it's much too late to fix it. Leave a comment down below on any ideas you'd like to see in this series for any park, including Ontario Place, or even the City of Toronto, and so on. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, or even join our channel's memberships down below. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you drop a like? Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch our videos, and hopefully you have an amazing weekend. You may now lift up on those restraints and exit to your left. Thank you. Bye.